How is it going out there, everyone? My name is Eric, and today we're going to revisit one of my videos that I just did uh, on React Native CLI. And, and basically, let me just say that this developer has redeemed himself. Thank you so much. And this, this shout out goes to Mark uh, Lawler. And he is the creator and contributor of the React Native Native Win project. He left a comment on my last video and he rewrote the documentation so it does work. So, um, and he explained quite a few things, which I'll talk about in a second here. So let's dive into this one here and let's go through what this actually is. So we, we've, we did discuss this in the last project, React Native CLI is the, is the thing I'm trying to use. And I want to use Tailwind. So he built a library um, that is uh, native wind and it's super simple, but when I tried it last time, it didn't work for me and some, some things have changed. So it works now. I have tried it and we're going to go ahead and just run this command right now. So on the left side in the terminal, we're going to run NPX react native in it. Awesome native wind. And then we're going to add a TypeScript uh, flag to it. And while that is compiling, we're going to go through the steps here on what is new and what uh, didn't work for me. I'll kind of explain the two. Um, so first off the bat, uh, one person mentioned uh, in the comments that you have to run pod install. And I said that, that that's not part of the documentation. And it is not part of the documentation. I do not believe you have to run pod install in this one. Uh, typically you do, though, in a lot of packages when you um, are doing things uh, not in Expo, but again, React Native CLI. Let's say you add a, um, I don't know, some sort of uh, lower level package then you would have to, if, if the packages, or let's say you install fonts or icons, that's a good one. Uh, you usually have to run the pod install package then or something else, or Firebase is another good one. Um, when you're accessing like the, the native bindings, um, you would do that. So, okay, that one's finished. So we can go ahead and now CD into that and we'll actually start adding what we need. So we're gonna go a CD awesome project. We'll go in here and we'll run this command of yarn add native wind. So that will happen real quick. And then we need to add its peer dependency of Tailwind CSS. And that will be done really quick. And then the next command we're going to have to run is this npx tailwind init. You could create this file, I assume, by yourself, but they've made a nice handy init uh, file for you. So you can just go ahead and run that command and we'll, that will create the tailwind.config.ts file for you. Now, instead of that, inside of that file, we're going to need to take the this line here where it says content. And one thing I've already noticed that he's changed is this you should used to say um, screens, you know, would be a directory for screens, but I think this is much better for newcomers like myself trying to um, understand what to do. My architecture may not have screens in it yet, um, but uh, and, and in this project they do not. So I think this makes a lot of sense. So good job on that. Uh, let me close this out. Okay. So in our uh, Tailwind config file, we need to add the, instead of the content, we're just going to paste this line in. Now, as I mentioned, I don't have screens yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that part of the array and hit save and I can close that file. And we're done with the Tailwind config file. We'll move on to the Babel config file and what we need to do here is add native win Babel. So we can go into the Tailwind or the Babel config file and if you notice from my last video, I explained that we didn't have presets or we did have it in uh, create, uh, we did have the presets in um, in the React Native CLI, uh, but in the documentation, this was omitted. So it kind of makes more sense now because you know, you're know you doing it. Uh, you can imagine that you're, you just created this project and now you're like, well, where is the presets? Do I need that? And so this makes a lot more sense. So again, good job on this, Mark. He updated that here, I noticed. And then, um, so we're done with the Babel config. We're ready to start coding. That's it, start writing code. Cool. So he's done quite a few things. I think he maybe took some inspiration from my video. Maybe not, I don't wanna take credit for it. But he did clean this up quite a bit and he did get rid of the style sheet. Um, and by the way, I, I imagine it. you could probably use this in parallel with the React Native style sheet. I just don't think you'd want to. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do some cleanup on the boilerplate and we will go through and it looks like he says, get rid of colors, get rid of style sheet. 
So we will do all of this and just follow along in these instructions. So all of the red parts we're going to get rid of. Uh, we're going to delete those. We're going to add or replace rather anything that has styles dot in it. And so we're going to replace this one with that. We're going to add this text here, if I can grab it correctly. And we're going to take that and put that one here like so. And the next one is going to be the children. And that would be here. So we're going to get rid of that. We're going to paste that there and we hit save. Okay. The next part here, we're going to remove this background style and we're going to change it to tailwind classes. So we're going to go here and do so like that. Then we're on to the safe area part where we no longer have style equals background style. We have class name. So really uh, the only thing that's changing there is that one. So we can change that to this and we have class name here of background style instead of style over here. Where is that one is right here. Okay. The next thing is class name background white, and then it has the dark mode enabled. So that's awesome stuff. And we can just do it like this. There we go. And uh, did I do that? Yeah, I did that right. Okay, I'm getting confused. All right, this one here, we just want to add class name here to this text area. I'm just going to grab it like this. So instead of that right here, we're going to do that. Okay, moving right along. Now, the only la last step we have to do is remove the style sheet object that we had before. So we can get rid of that function. Now you may also be seeing this uh, red squiggly line for all the class names and it's a TypeScript error. In order to fix the TypeScript error in native wind, follow the TypeScript guide here and add this reference here uh, for declaring the merging. So all you have to do is go ahead and create a new file call it app or my app or something .d .ts, and just paste this line in the three line comment it out. Uh, reference type and then it works. So we'll do npx start and uh, and then what I'll do is I will go grab another terminal here and do npx react native run iOS, right? And that's going to go ahead and create the project inside of our simulator and we'll fire it up. And then afterwards we're going to play around with dark mode, dark and light mode, and we'll just kind of see things from that. The rest you could refer to either Mark's documentation on native wind, or you could refer to um, Tailwind's documentation because the beauty of uh, native wind here is that uh, the upstream upstream changes. Uh, so when Tailwind uh, makes an update, say from version three to version four, could be you know breaking changes. Likely the syntax of the styling, like you know background red. Uh, 300 isn't going to change. Um, and so those changes will, um, will be updated in the native win library. So you don't have to worry about maintaining this all of the time or having breaking changes. The other library that I was referencing before in my other video, that one, because they built their own compiler, as Mark pointed out, that one likely would break. And so this one is a better bet. Uh, they put a lot of energy and time into this one. So um, I'm really pleased to see it working. And I'm really thankful that Mark and his team uh, patched this up accordingly. So um, let's see what else. Yeah. So why don't you guys um, do me a favor right now? And not only do I want you to go and, um, you know, subscribe to my channel, uh, we're almost at 400 subscribers. It'd be great if you could, you know, toss this around, tell your friend that maybe these videos are going to get better at some point. Um, but I would really appreciate it. Uh, I try to follow everyone that's following me. So if I haven't ping me, I'll follow you right back. I, I want to know what everyone's doing. So yeah, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell and, uh, yeah, let's do that. So the other thing I want to show you is if you want to go over to Mark's um, native wind here, then go ahead and do it. And I didn't give him a star last time, but guess what? Mark, you just got yourself another star. And, and I will probably sponsor you as well. Um, because this is a project that I think I will believe in more and more and more. I really liked your developer response and how quick it was. 
And, uh, you know, honestly, you're doing a great job. And I do realize how difficult it is to run any open source project. It is tough. And uh, so I thank you for that. Now, the other one, I'm not going to unstart. I think they should um, continue to, to build. And, uh, but it is just one developer. So, all right. So here we go. We're up and running with Native Wind and React Native CLI. That was not difficult at all. It was very, very simple. Okay, so we're in dark mode. So we already know dark mode works. If I was to uh, go over here into my settings, and so we'll just jump into settings, go down to the developer tab at the bottom here, and you can go to dark appearance. So right at the top it says dark appearance or light appearance. So I'll switch that off. I'll go back to my React Native app here, and there you go. Look at that. That is brilliant. So dark mode works, tailwind works. And if you notice too, another thing to point out is the class names. We don't need extra, we're just using class name. We're not using um, the syntax I was using before in the other library, which I do still like for some reason. Again, what I'm looking for is, is parity. So if I was using this before as a, as a class, so if we say BG red, you know, 300, that's awesome. If my other web projects or any other related component projects are using that, I think that's a fantastic thing. But it's still not uh, as native as it would be uh, with this way, because this is what you already find if you just put in Tailwind in your project on a web project. So hats off to you. Hats off to everyone for contributing here. And uh, with that said, I hope you guys found this great and helpful. Um, let me know in the comments below. And again, please help me get that 400 subscribers. We probably will do it by tonight. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you and uh, I'll see you in the next one.